process? The process was we listened to it like how many times? A million times, 10 times, 15 times, and we all argued over what was happening. It was this whole process about how it's a guy coming home and then he ends up at like a surprise birthday party. And that's where like the whole climax is. It's, like, it's a birthday party and all the 16 floats, we heard them was like bubble tea because they're kind of like bubbly and they like flow together. And then that's kind of the whole story because the entire song kind of sounds like a large build to something, I guess, greater. And so like it's a guy coming home from work or something he had like a rough day, but then he ends up coming home to a giant surprise party. Cool. Wait, now do you remember it differently? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, first, it starts off um, with a person, and they they walk off from uh, Park Street, the, the train station in um, downtown Boston, and then they they come to a parade, and then they're meeting their friend there, and and then they walk they walk to Chinatown, go. And they go to Tito, they drink some bubble tea, and that's, that's where you get the bubbly feeling. And then, and then when they walk out, the climax gets in, and, and it's a surprise birthday party for the friend meeting them. Well, I, I'll add something yeah. to it. I'm, I'm very impressed with this, actually, uh, because the, pi the piece um, it's called Steps Ahead. Originally, it was called uh, Walking Music, and I just, I just had in mind um, that was my working title before I put the actual title on and um, because I was trying to imagine uh, somebody going out for a walk and um, when we go out for a walk we often come upon things and we might stop and admire them. So in the score I, I, I had in, in mind two arrival points. So there's the there's promenade music at the beginning which is the walking music and then there's the fir first arrival and a second arrival and then the end and, uh, and what's what the uh, ensemble here has crafted is a story that, that actually follows that, where the, the first arrival is the bubbly, <laughs> what you're calling the, the bubbly tea, oh, and the, the, the second arrival is the, is the birthday party. So, so. I took notes. <laughs> as, so it, it actually starts in, so to be specific, it's in the fall, oh, okay. and it's twilight. All right, even and, a, and we decided on a genderless person because we couldn't decide on the gender of the story, of the, of the character, and they're actually in the Boston Common. And you write, turn the corner transposition. Yes. And then the wind, and so we determine that's when the wind blows. And the leaves, you can see the leaves falling from the trees. And you arrive at Park Street Station, and there's a parade at Park Street Station. And that's the first destination. Yeah, the oh, so the second friend starts at 18, where it says onward. Right. And they're actually, we discussed the specific street in which they were coming from, because there's this side street in downtown yeah. where it's sort of like a darker, it's never very sunny, ever. And it's got cobblestone walkways. Mm -hmm. And that friend, and because it's, it's got this kind of mysterious sound yeah. to it. And so that's the friend. And where we, where the fermata is in the clarinets and where you have the mark tree, mm -hmm. um, the friends meet by chance, or is it really by chance? Wow. <laughs> um, the plot thickens. Isn't right, it? and then they go for bubble tea. And it ah, actually, to I me, see. looks like bubble tea. That when they sense. came up with that, and I thought sure. that that was um, adorable. Sure. Have you ever had bubble tea? I haven't, I don't, I don't that's oh. you have to, you've, you, is there a good brand, or is it, is oh, that no, the brand? Oh no, you have to go, okay, so specifically your piece um, takes place at Tea Doe, which I've never been to. Like it's, an in it's in Chinatown, uh, and it's got these tapioca pearls in the bottom. So it's got this chewy, wow. gummy kind of... It um, sounds good. Um, I think you have to try it now. Yeah, especially that Tito. It's a musical expression, right? It's like right, scaled to right. be seven and an eight. That's why when I wrote it down, <laughs> when they said that, I said it was so perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. So it, but um, and at 41, they're leaving Tito. Uh -huh. Apparently, this is all by chance. But then there's this building, like, what's this? And 46, really? Is this really happening? Mm -hmm. Arrival, 48, is the surprise the party. surprise party. Guys, yes. It's even more elaborate. So, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, it was I'm, quite I'm, elaborate. I'm even more impressed by that. So was that, this happened bit by bit, or like quickly when everybody assembled um, in that first session, you came up with this detailed story? Do you remember? Was it, well, did, did it get added to as time went on? Or? Well, like, it was during that, I'm pretty sure it was during that one session, but we listened to the the, the, the MIDI version, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. piece like one by one, bit by bit, and I then see. we came up with the scenario as we kept listening. Yeah. On. There was definitely some arguing. 
Yeah. Like positive, <laughs> positive debate. There was, there was a debate about which season it was. It was like, it was like either winter or fall uh -huh. in between and then went Terrific. fall. Terrific. Mm -hmm. So let me ask this. In the other repertoire, the other pieces that you've played in band, has this happened where, where um, suddenly you came up with a storyline to go along with the piece or is this the first time you, you, this you know? This is the first for me. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. You know, maybe, is it, what about the rest of you? Same? Uh, yeah, this is the first. I even Nathan, the same? Yeah. No? Yeah. Well, that might maybe we can learn something from this, which is when you encounter a new piece, and as you've all said, you know, a new piece can be a little scary because, you know, you, it's never been done before and you're kind of trying to figure out how to do it. This is, a, I think, a wonderful way to think about approaching a new piece in the future. You know, maybe when you go, you know, after you graduate or when you, as you grow up and you're playing in other bands and you encounter new pieces, you can tell this story about how you had this new piece to play, and one of the things that helped was to put it into a context, into a kind of a story context. And it doesn't, you know, the thing is, it doesn't have to be, the audience doesn't necessarily have to know that. What's important is that you know it, and, th and then that gives you, like, important, we'll call them guideposts or, you know, things to hang on to. So, you know, oh, here comes that bubbly tea or whatever, and, and it, it, when we know something is coming, it's that much more strengthened, if you will. It's like we, it, it'll be that much more positive when we, when we um, in an effort to get there. When we talk, just as we're doing now, the words come up because we have an idea, right? It's like yeah. we, we don't talk if we don't have an idea because how, why would we? There's nothing to say. And the same when, for me as a composer, the notes won't come out if I don't have something I'm aiming toward. Um, and that something might be an abstract musical thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a bubbly tea for me, but you know, it, it might be. But for you as players, the fact that you have that is very much like for me in the creative process, that it, this, this gives you reason to play. It makes you play toward those points. And, and, and when that happens, you'll find, as, as you I'm sure already found out, you play a little better. You play with a little more confidence. So when you were talking about the lack of, you, some of you, well, all of you actually said you're a little worried about whether you, you can do this, so that, you know, there's, that's about confidence. Do you have the confidence that you can do it? This should help. Have the confidence that you know the party's coming or whatever signpost you have in the music that helps you get there. Those can be extremely important. But, you know, sometimes in performance we make mistakes or we get lost. It happens to everybody, even the best, best players. And I'm not wanting that to happen to you in any performance. But if it does, when you have these guideposts, when you have this storyline that you made, that gets you back in. You say, oh yeah, you know this is coming. Oh, here comes that thing that's familiar now. And then you're back in, and you're not like lost forever. I mean, if you didn't have those things, you might actually be lost the whole way through the piece, right? So I think it's fabulous, and it's a great educational, uh, I mean, it's just fun that you did it, number one, but it actually has practical uh, importance. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a, very a very significant thing that you did. It's great, it makes me feel good also. Yeah. You know, someday somebody might do that. They might, you know, to go out and take the pictures of, of Boston Common and the Public Garden and, and show those while the piece is being played. That would be a possible way of doing it. It might be kind of fun, actually. And then your story will be, you know, somebody will have a surprise birthday party scene and a bubbly tea and whatever. Mm -hmm.